Happy Friday, everybody. It's uh, sunny out. It's 10 degrees. And it's uh, not even 11 o'clock in the morning. So we're coming to you a little early today. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm... Uh, Last night I showed you I was working on the, the filling everything. Well, I still have to put the... I still have to put the trash boards on, so what I was going to do is I bent one of them wrong last week when I made them. So I was going to show you exactly from start to finish how I make one instead of just telling you how I made it. So I'll, uh, I'll try to kind of hurry a little bit, but still give you an idea. So, so what I will do here is I will just, normally I make a pattern. So what I'll do is I'll turn this here on the piece of just the sheet 18 gauge sheet metal and I will uh, I will trace it real quick and uh, show you how a piece of sheet metal turns into a uh, one of my parts on one of my models so there's that there's step one right there you just mark it on the metal. I this this doesn't have a good edge, so I kept a little bit of a space to cut that on the shear to get a perfect straight edge. So, okay, step two would be my nibbler, and because it's a curved, because it's curved, I won't cut it on the shear, so I will um, put a curve in it. So that's the first the first cut I'll make is the curve, so I have a lot bigger piece of here to hang on to. So, okay, so here's the nibbler. And here I'll make my first cut. This is this is a tool that I've had for probably 20 years, and it's just it doesn't look like much. I bought a an old air powered shear that was supposed to cut sheet metal, but it it won't cut anything um thicker than probably 20 gauge 22 gauge and it works good for the thin stuff but this here really does a nice job and even this says it's supposed to cut 16 gauge but it struggles at 16 gauge so the 18 gauge this one is, works perfect i actually have two of these one for a backup and i got i got extra teeth for it and so i could not survive without this little nibbler and I see now on the on the internet they sell a lot of different ones so they're not as expensive as these were years ago so so there's my first cut so you can see the you can see the first curve there and you can see I stayed pretty close to the, the line so there won't be too much to clean off of there so okay so there's first step was to trace it second step was to get that curve in there and now the next step will be to bring it over here to the shear Right here and I'll uh can you get that dab a little bit yeah and I'll shear off these right at the line right there there's one and I because I don't want a sharp tip there I'm going to cut a little bit of the tip off and I'll come over here and get that front piece cut off right there and then I'll come down here and I'll start my cut here and I'll take one little and just some little short Cuts, and then I'll get this little top edge here there that's as much as I can get with the shear so now I'll take my my cutter here and I'll uh, show you how I got that I get that notch in there so so here's the notch the mark for the notch and let's see Deb there might be a little sparks but let's see we'll just kind of see cuts in there and then what I do is that because I don't want a mark on the, the front of it I'll take it and I'll take just barely touch that just to make a little penny mark so that's the next step okay, there's the next 
there's the next little mark right there that will help me bend that right at the perfect spot. So then you just take this with the pliers and move that back and forth a couple times. And there's my little notch. So the next thing is to go in here and clean it up a little bit. So now I'll take this and clean and go back and forth. you shear this off and after you cut this there's just all kinds of sharp little burrs pieces of steel on here you can see them right there and uh if this was left on the model and somebody moved the model they cut themselves it's just like glass so the next thing is every single piece every single edge every corner both sides have to be completely smooth so that's the next thing. run your fingers right on every edge you slide it right on there and if you can feel see there's a little bit of a burr right there not enough to cut get cut with but i can still feel it so that will have to be just touched up just that much. there's one little burr right here on this end you can see we went from the, the piece of 18 gauge sheet metal to marking it to uh, cutting out the middle piece and now all that's left is to bend it so I showed you the other day the other night what I did there was I uh, clamped it I just held up to this little piece of uh, I believe it's inch and three quarters Kind of do it, and I'm going to clamp this right like so. And there's one clamp, and then I'm going to clamp the other one like so. Okay, so now this is going to get a curve like this, and so to get that curve both exactly the same, I had to clamp them both exactly the same spot, and so that doesn't need a, a real drastic bend. But all I'm going to do now is just kind of grab it here and just kind of pull it around. I love the 18 gauge sheet metal because 16 gauge is just, it's harder to work with. It's harder to bend and harder to cut. And the 20 gauge and 22 gauge is too thin. It just, my models are so big and heavy that I, that I don't want the metal so thin that it's going to bend or buckle anywhere. So. This is perfect. I love, absolutely love the 18 gauge. And you gotta be careful welding it. But like I say, you can't lay a bead on it. You just have to tack everything. And, but I tell you, when them tacks are all welded together in the right spots, the, the, I actually build snow blades with 18 gauge sheet metal and people say, nah, you can't do that. Well, for a garden tractor, you can. And uh, so the trick is, the trick is the bracing behind it. Because once you put, once I bend that, the blade, 
it doubles the strength of that 18 gauge sheet metal and I don't put a roll in it. I put every I put a kink in it might be every two inches in the blade and I mean that gives a that gives it more strength than if it was just a curve. So so every time you bend put that little bend in it, if you bend it just a, past a certain amount, um, it, it really doubles the strength of it. So okay, so here we are. So I'll hold this one here up and uh see if we're close before I uh, maybe just a hair more. So just a hair more. I can tweak that after I take it off. So there's my bend. And there's my new piece on that one. So I still have to make one more because I want one extra one for my uh, prototype there in case I build that seven bottom plow for the 6030. And uh, this will just help me kind of see similar similar measurements and how I kind of went about it so so there's my there's the two that haven't been put the bend in them yet and there's one that, that I just started to try out before I put the pipe on it just to see and so there's okay so I got one one two three four five so, so after I cut, I can, still, I can still use, I'll still be able to use this one, so, so I'm in good shape, so we, uh, I'm going to be sanding today all day, so I don't want to do no painting today, and uh, if you want to back up a little bit, Deb, we're, uh, I still am going to do a, another video later, supper time. So, uh, we, um, I just barely, I got more of this, the bad spots in here and filled in. I got a few up here filled in. And, uh, so I'm working, just getting started on some of that stuff. And I said, well, I got to get these, I got to get these, uh, trash, trash boards put on before I go too much farther. So I just thought it'd be kind of nice if you want to swing around that real and point the camera outside and kind of show what our backyard looks like. It's been cold. And if you want to look up to our roof and you can see the snow and the ice slowly moving out. And when it gets out about 12 inches, it breaks off. And uh, I've had a metal roof now for probably 15 years. Both my neighbors have, re in fact, three of my neighbors have replaced the shingles on their, their roof just last year, the second time. So I, that part of it, the metal roof is great, and the snow does slide off it when the, when it, the temperatures warm up. But, uh, but sometimes I just think I have my moments. But for the most part, I'm happy with the metal roof. And there you can see my little loader out there, the Walden. I gotta get, as soon as it hits 30 degrees, I'm gonna go out and sho shovel that out and start it up. It hasn't been started in probably six weeks. And uh, it'll start, it would start. It's just gonna be a job to get that old frozen hard snow out of there and lift, lift that cover back. So I'm waiting for a little bit warmer day. But it would start even below zero. And it cranks over slow, but that little that little uh, Ford engine, four-cylinder Ford gas engine, fires right up. So there's our backyard. So we got a long ways to go till spring. And uh, there, Deb, you can swing back here. And last night we were gonna go. We were gonna have burnt chicken soup, remember? Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I don't, didn't want to. I didn't want to like hurt Deb's feelings. But I said, hey, how about we go out for supper? Not that I didn't want your burnt chicken soup, because today we're probably going to eat the burnt chicken. No, no. Today's Fish Friday. Oh. We get deep fried fish and french fries today. So not that I don't want the burnt soup, not that I didn't want the burnt chicken, but today's Fish Friday. So today for lunch, we're having fish and chips, right? Mm -hmm. And so that sounds excellent. Yeah, we can have the burnt chicken for supper the burnt chicken soup yeah okay so okay so you ain't getting out of it 
You're gonna force me to eat the burnt chicken soup? <laughs> That's fine. I, I love you, and I do that for you, Ma. I don't want to hurt you. I'd rather eat the burnt stuff than to hurt your feelings. So that's true love, right? <laughs> right. So, yeah. all righty. You do a lot of things for me that you don't really probably want to do, but hey, that's life. <laughs> okay, guys. So we'll we're gonna probably do a another video later, but I just never really take the time to show you. Right from the beginning, starting with a piece of metal, and show you how I actually trace it and cut cut it out right from the. And while we're here, I'll show you this right here. Here's if you peek over here, maybe stand right there, Deb. Here's the sheet. Here's the sheet metal that I have left for the winter, and here's the pieces. I don't know if we've showed them this perforated metal before deb do you remember it seems like we did but okay. maybe not maybe okay, so not some of you have asked me i don't know some of you have asked me where i get my what i use for my screens and radiators and all this different stuff on the hoods and uh, i have i have 20 sheets of this uh perforated metal and it's it ranges from like 1 16th holes all the way up to uh, uh quarter inch and five sixteenths holes for like a bigger bulldozer that would get that bigger screen in the front for the for the grill and it would get to use the smaller stuff for the radiator and i have some some with the i have some with this can you kind of see that deb on the camera yep it's got long elongated holes on it and i used that on the hood for the the bronze tile machine and it was perfect it looked identical to the one that was and then here's some more back here and there's some with large really large ones large slots in them and uh so not that i'll ever i'll ever use them but i've uh or, oh here's some really tiny ones wow i forgot that i had these smaller ones right there wow that's that is not even a sixteenth of an inch i don't think so anyway that's that so for you guys there are new people that haven't seen me show this before I uh here's my metal and here's some of my thicker pieces this is like 3 16 that I use and I to, to cut that I used a plasma cutter I got a hypotherm 45 plasma cutter and I love it I absolutely love it okay so here we go we got this is the, the steel that I have left for this winter okay so I got one two I got two pieces about 12 inches and I got there's another 12 so I got three pieces at 12 inches I got one two three four five pieces at maybe 14 inches so that's the rest of my steel that I have the last till spring unless I have to go to the uh, Gaylord machine and fabricating to get some more so so for now that's uh, kind of just giving you a little bit of some of the new visitors a little bit of uh what's what goes on here in my little workshop so and uh deb if you want to come right here and stand right there and kind of look at the tractor at the hood that kind of got kind of a nice little shine to the hood from that angle can you kind of see it mm -hmm. maybe you can come over here and shine this way so there may be right over there though the best i think the farther in this it shows it shining a little bit better so so anyway, we're slowly getting there, and I, I don't want to hurry because it defeats the whole purpose of me enjoying being out here is, is feeling hurried and, um. Because what what's going to happen if I hurry? Then I just start on the next model, and so then I just work seven days a week. I continue to work seven days a week. So, I've worked all winter, seven days a week, and only took I think three three days out three Sunday afternoons off so i think i paid my dues and so now i'm just going to enjoy it and if, if it takes me another week to finish the plow fine if it takes me another two weeks to finish the tractor nicole just got the the decals done so she got the decals done for um ej potter's tractor right here and she got the decals done for the tractor for the 4020s she got the decals done for the plow and she got some, um, let's see, what else did she get? I think most 
EJ Potter, the plow, the tractor, and she even did a couple extra, she did a couple extra ones for the 6030, so, so we're in business, so as soon as we get the decals, maybe another week, I'll get, I'll go get back to EJ, I'm going to finish EJ Potter's before I finish either one of these, so I'm going to take it apart, I'm going to sand, I'm going to paint the rims, gray and I'm going to paint the exhaust pipes gray I'm going to paint the seat and the steering wheel black and I'm going to paint the air cleaners up on the top silver or gray to give it a little bit of a more of a personality and then we'll get the decals on there and so I uh next week by next next weekend EJ Potter's will finally be done sorry about taking so long everybody a lot of you are asking whatever happened to EJ's tractor um Mostly it's because we've been waiting for the decals and I didn't want to order the decals until we got all these decals here figured out. So that was kind of the hold up on that. But it's, it's, uh, the EJ Potter's is, I'd say it's 95% done. So it's, it's not like it's going to take a lot to finish. It's just mostly the decals. So, okay guys, thanks again for all the nice comments and we'll see you later. Have a great Friday.